Pop Church family. Good morning or good evening, depending on when you're watching this video. It has been such a long time, been far too long since we've been able to see each other. Um, I pray that all is well. I pray that even, <clears throat> excuse me, even through all that's going on, um, that you're still happy and, and knowing that God is with you. Um, these are, are unprecedented times. Um, it's not uh, it's not like anything that we've ever seen before, um, but I know that we serve a God that is able, and and so I'm here today just to give you a word of encouragement. God placed something on my heart um, that I wanted to share with you. Um, obviously, with the COVID nineteen, um, it's really disrupted our lives. Um, it's caused us not to even be able to really assemble a church, which I never ever would have thought that would have happened, um, but. You know, I um, going through this, I've learned that e you can even still feel the presence of God at home if you just place your mind and pray and think on those things that that you should. Um, I mean, I had a couple moments here since since being home um, that God has really just kind of ministered to me uh, one on one. And so I um, just want to continue to encourage you and, and just let you know that God is still God and he doesn't need four walls to be God. Um, so, so during this COVID-19, um, our lives have been, very, like I was saying, disrupted. Um, many adults are suffering. Many adults, um, you, you see it on the news, um, they're, they're people that aren't able to work. They're able, they want to work, but they aren't able to because their place of employment may be deemed as non-essential. Um, and so um, there's a lot of uh, worry. There's a lot of panic. Um, but I'm here today to give you a, a message of knowing that you don't need to fear. There's no need to fear. And not only um, are, are our adults suffering, but also our youth. I mean, you guys are experiencing this for the first time as well. And there's a lot of uncertainty. And when there's uncertainty, um, it creates fear because the normal or what I expect is not occurring. So what's going to happen next and when will this end? Um, but God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So I'm here to encourage you today. I want you to know that there's no need to fear. Why is there no need to fear? I have four points today that I want to lay out to you to help you to understand why. My first point is God is our refuge and our strength. My second point is God is our peace. My third point is God will never leave us. And then finally, it's important to inventory your thoughts. So in preparing this message, like I said, God really placed this on my heart. And, and I just um, began just to research and God just began to bring scriptures up to me to help me to be able to prepare this. And so I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that it encourages you as, as much as it has encouraged me. Um, so if we could, let's just begin with a small prayer just to make sure that we reverence God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you as humbly as we know how. We thank you, Father God, for this day, for this moment, Lord. We know that each moment is a gift from you, and so we take it not for granted, Father God. We know, Father God, that you're able to provide for us, Father God, so we're not going to fear. We're not going to worry. We thank you, Father God, for this word that, that you have allowed me to bring forth, Lord. I ask that it fall on good soil, Father God. I ask you use me as a vessel, Father God. Let them see you and not me, Father God, for I need no credit, Father God, because I give you all the credit and all the glory, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that you just bless our youth at City Cathedral, Lord. Help them to continue to be encouraged, continue to do their studies, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you just continue to place a hedge of protection around them, allow the enemy not to come near and eye, Lord, and bless their parents, Father God, as well. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so my first point is God is our refuge and, in our, and he's our strength. In Psalms 46, 1 and 2, it states, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, uh, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. So what this is telling us that, hey, God is our strength and he's our refuge. And so I was like, OK, well, I want to define and understand, OK, what does refuge mean? And according to Webster's Dictionary, refuge, a condition of being safe or a shelter from the pursuit of danger or trouble. So, hey, God is our refuge. He is our shelter. He's 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 the that condition of being safe. 
um, as well as strength. What does strength mean? It's the capacity of an object or substance to withstand great force or pressure. And what greater strength is there than God, the creator of all the heavens and all the earth? So, hey, our first the first thing that we need to know that is God is our refuge and our strength. It's not us. It's not by our power. It's not by our might, but it's by his spirit. And that's what the word of God states. So it's not up to me to be strong and it's not up to me to be a refuge, but it's up to me to have faith, to place it into the ultimate refuge and the ultimate strength. And that is in God. And so um, in understanding and knowing, okay, hey, now I don't need to fear because he's my refuge and strength. The next thing is God is our peace. According to John 14 and 27, it states, peace, I leave with you. My peace I give you, I don't give it to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. So God is our peace. He's given us peace and we don't have to go look for any other place than in him. So when we, you know, go and, and we're dealing with a situation or something's going on, hey, let's pray. Pray about it. Give it to God so that God, the peace that surpasses all understanding can keep you. Um, this situation with COVID-19, hey, it, I can understand you not having peace if you were carnal and you begin to just worry about how can this happen or how is my life going to change? What's happening? But God has not caused us to fear. He's our peace. So we have to place our faith and trust in him and know that he's going to see through the circumstance and take care of us and keep us protected as long as we keep our faith in him. Uh, another scripture um, that uh, kind of talks about God being our peace is 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And that states, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. And this is the NIV version, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And in the King James Version, it says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. And so I begin to think about that. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And we know that God ultimately is love. So if God didn't give us the spirit of fear, where did fear come from? And it's amazing, just in three chapters of beginning the Bible in Genesis, fear came when Adam and Eve were disobedient to God and ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge and evil. Because as soon as Adam did it and God was walking through the garden, he said he was afraid because he was naked. And God was like, well, how do you understand? How do you know that? He already knew the answer, but it was because Adam allowed the serpent in the garden to cause him to sin. So once sin entered the earth, that's when fear started. But Jesus died and rose again. I know we celebrated Easter not too long ago in, in remembrance and of, of Jesus' dying and rising. So Jesus died for our sins. So now we don't have to operate in that fear anymore because Jesus paid the price for that sin that entered when Adam entered and, and was disobedient to God. So God didn't give us a spirit of fear. And fear really is faith put into the wrong application. So if you believe something like, I believe that I'm going to win the lottery, right? That's why I put my faith in, right? So if I'm believing that and I'm putting my faith in that, then I've got to put some actions behind that, right? Uh, we can make it more applicable. I believe I'm going to make an A in my math class, right? So if I believe I'm going to make an A in my math class, I can't just sit and say, hey, well, I, I have faith and I believe that I'm going to make an A in my math class, right? I've got to put some work. It says faith without works is dead, right? So if I believe that I'm going to make an A, then maybe I begin to study more. Maybe I begin to create flashcards to help me understand my multiplication, to help me understand algebra or geometry or whatever math class that you may be in, right? I'm putting faith, I'm putting work behind the faith of that. I believe that I'm going to get an A in math. Uh, the same thing when you apply your faith incorrectly in fear. So if I fear that I'm going to get hurt or I fear that I'm going to get sick, because I'm putting my faith into action and saying, hey, I'm worried about it. I'm thinking it about it all the time. I'm always looking. I'm doing this or what have you. Then because of my faith put in, in the wrong application, it may very well may happen. So you've got to be cautious about that. You've got to understand and know that God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us the spirit of love, of peace, and of a sound mind. So 
knowing that that's what God has given us, then that's what we should be focused on and not worrying about being afraid. The next thing is God will never leave us. In Deuteronomy 31 and 8, it reads, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and don't be discouraged. So here it is. God is letting us know, hey, he's going to go before us. He's going to make a way and he's going to make sure that we're taken care of. So don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't be worried. So if, if I mean, this is what the word of God is saying. It's true. Cannot return void. So we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be worried because God is never going to leave us. He's going to always be with us. Another scripture, Hebrews 13, verses 5 through 6, and it states, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. And so I will hope no fear and I will have no fear. And what can mere people do to me? So what can mere people do to me? God is going to go before us. He's never going to leave us. It says here, he will never fail you. So it may not happen exactly the way you want it to happen, but he's never going to fail you. And then with due time, as long as you stay diligent and, and stay committed to him, he'll take care of you. And I'm pretty sure if you talk to your parents or maybe your grandparents and you ask them, I'm sure they're going to say, say that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread. I'm sure they'll tell you that. I'm sure they can tell you all, all kinds of stories and situations and circumstances that they've gone through that because they kept the faith and God has never left them, that they were able to make it through. And so just be encouraged in knowing that, hey, God is never going to leave us. He's always with us. He's going to be our strength and our refuge. He's going to make sure that he is our peace and he's going to make sure that he never leaves us. So God's word says it when you pray. Use his use these scriptures and let God know, hey, Lord, in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, you said I'll never fail you. God, that's what you told me. You said you'll never fail me. And when you call him on his word, then, hey, he, he's faithful to perform it and do it. So um, it's very important to think about. And, and my last point is it's important to inventory your, your thoughts. And so we're, we're speaking of, you know, we're talking about faith, uh, fear being uh faith put in the wrong application. So, um, you know, with all the news going on, social media going on, all these type of things going on with all this negativity and all the, this, um, you know, causing, I think, greater fear um, because of it, because we're continuously dwelling and watching it and seeing it, um, that it can actually, you know, enter into enter your system. So into your, into your spirit. Um, the word says in Romans 10 and 17, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So if faith comes by hearing, if we continue to listen to the news, we continue to listen to negative social media, we continue to listen to negative music, um, then this is how it's going to enter into your spirit because that is, that is the avenue that faith comes. It comes by hearing. That's what God's word says. So we've got to be cautious of what we are listening to because faith comes from that and if we put our faith into the wrong thing because we continue to listen to it um, we can um, cause ourselves to live in in fear um, when we don't have to um, very important uh, scripture here philippians 4 8 through 9 it says this finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, whether you have learned or received or heard from me or seen it in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So this scripture is telling us what we should do, what, what we should think about, what, what we should be um, focusing on. I mean, right. It says whatever is right. Right. What is what is right? I was like, OK, well, let me just kind of define a couple of these words to help, you know, me understand this a little bit better. Whatever is right. Right is morally good or acceptable. So let's think about what's morally good or acceptable is being obedient to your parents is doing your homework because you should. Is that is that right? Well, then maybe that's what we should think about. Now, if going on social media and bullying people, is that right? I don't think so. So 
We've got to understand and know, hey, that we've got to do what's right and think about what's right because that's what the scripture tells us. Whatever is right, think about those things. What's pure? Pure means free of any contamination. So, hey, we've got to think about what's right. What 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 is according to God's word? What's pure? God say love, right? The greatest of all is love. Put no other God before me and love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, our mind, soul, and body and love your neighbor as yourself. So the greatest is love. So love is pure. And so we should think about those things. We should think about loving and helping our neighbor. If we see our neighbor in need, we should help them. We should pray for them. You know, if we see our brother or sister is in need of help, we should pray and, and, and do the same for them. Um, another thing, what's admirable? It, it means deserving respect. So think about that. The thoughts that you're thinking, are they respectful thoughts or are they disrespectful thoughts? And so, you know, I, I'll read that scripture again just to kind of hone in hone in the, the um, important point of us inventorying our thoughts and making sure that we are focusing on the things that we should focus on. And that scripture again is Philippians 4, 8 and 9. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whether you have learned or received or heard it from me or seen it, seen me put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So as we go through these times, as we're, you know, living out this pandemic, just be encouraged. Just know that God is still God. God hadn't changed. Um, we're, we're the ones that are changing. God is never, he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. So knowing that, hey, I'm going to put my trust in God and come what may, whatever happens, I'm still going to trust him and know that all things are going to work together because I love him. And so I ask you to do the same thing. I ask you to just continue to, to be prayerful, um, to continue to read your Bible, um, you know, be there as a family. I think I, I, you know, I encourage you guys often to, hey, get together and pray every morning with your family before you would leave to go to school. I think you should still be doing that now. Every morning, get together as a family and just pray and let all your requests be known. Let 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 God know what you want um, so that he can do it. They say, asking it shall be given, seek you shall find, knocking the door shall be open. So try Try God, call God out on his word. God said that's what he's going to do. So he's he's got to do it because that's what he said. So again, there's no need to fear because God is our refuge. He's our strength. God is our peace and he'll never leave us. So I pray that you're encouraged by this word. Um, again, like I say, I wish uh, we could meet again. Soon we will. I know God is going to work this out where we can meet again. But in the meantime, I ask that you just continue to keep yourself safe, uh, continue to pray and just continue to know that I'm praying for you and I love you. And I ask that God just be with you. And I just want to end this message. There may be someone out there who may not know Christ that, you know, maybe just happened to pass by this video and they were like, hey, what, you know, what's going on? And so I want to offer you an opportunity to get to know Christ if you don't know Christ. Um, it's very simple. You have to believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again and that God, Jesus was God's only begotten son. And if you believe that, then you, you're you saved. And it's, it's really as simple as that. You just have to have faith and believe that. So I just want to end, end this message with a prayer for, for our nation and for you guys. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this message. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I lift, Father God, our nation up to you. I lift, Father God, the earth, Father God, all the leaders, all the people, Father God. I ask, Lord, your word says, with your stripes we are made whole, Father God. If there is anyone sick out there, Lord, I ask that you make them whole, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you just... Be with our families, Lord, in this time of need. Help us to just stay encouraged. Help us to stay focused on you, Father God, and not derailed by negative media and negative thoughts, Father God. But let us just continuously think about those pure thoughts, those admirable thoughts, Father God, those th thoughts that are right, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you just continue to protect us and watch over us and keep us safe. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. 
Well, guys, that's it. I love you guys so much. Uh, thank you. Soon we'll be back having service at City Cathedral. But in the meantime, God bless you. Hello, Pop Church family. Sister Mary Butler here bringing you greetings from our empty sanctuary. Just letting you know I really miss you guys. I love you. Can't wait for us to be back together again to share an awesome experience in God. In the meantime, stay prayerful, stay hopeful, and we will all get through this by God's grace. And remember to take care of your parents while they take care of you. Be blessed. Everybody, what's up? Missing y'all. Hey guys, miss y'all. Can't wait to get back in fellowship with you. <laughs> hey guys, love you and see you soon. Why you cut me off like that?